Hello. It's good to see you. I've got another building on the rock for you. I'm here in my study at the church this afternoon. The wind's blowing. The breeze is, is uh, trickling through the rose bushes out there. And uh, it's a beautiful day with the clouds and the sun. Uh, everything's a perfect, perfect mixture. I hope you're enjoying this day, too. I'm doing this on Monday afternoon. You probably won't get this until Wednesday sometime, I'm guessing. But here, book number one. We're back to book one again. I'm just kind of hopping around doing favorite stories uh, and reading them to you. But here we go. This takes us uh, to uh, the work of a deacon. And so uh, we have some good deacons in our church who do good things for people. And so this would be a good one. This is called Send Food to John. Send Food to John. On top of Washington Mountain, overlooking a deep valley, stood a simple hut. This hut was the home of John Barry, a poor charcoal burner. I'm guessing some of you have a grill and you grill hamburgers and things using charcoal. So think about that as you listen. John Barry, a poor charcoal burner. During the past summer, John had felt sick and was not able to work as much as usual. As winter approached, John and his wife had no money for food. That's sad. And sometimes we only read about these kind of stories, but they're they're real. I remember Mr. B. Ray Thompson. Some of you will remember him. He was with us just the last two or three years of his life before he went to be with the Lord. Mr. Thompson uh, carried on a considerable work helping the poor children of the Appalachians. And his foundation uh, gave dental care and uh, school supplies and all sorts of other things to a lot of uh, many, many poor families, and particularly the children. They exist, and they're not far from us. In December, several heavy snowfalls came. The road up the mountain from the village below was completely drifted shut. Before the road could be cleared, another storm raged, and John and his wife were stranded in their cabin with only one day's supply of food left. In the village of Sheffield, ten miles away, lived Deacon Brown. Mr. Brown was a well-to-do farmer, known for his Christian life and godly practices. The deacon and his wife had gone to bed, and in spite of the storm, both were sleeping soundly. Toward morning, the deacon suddenly woke. He sat up and asked his wife, Who's here? I heard someone talking. No one is here. Maybe Willie's talking in his sleep. But I heard someone say, Send food to John. Oh, that's nonsense, said Mrs. Brown. You've had a dream. Go back to sleep. The deacon laid down again. In a few minutes, he was asleep. Soon he jumped up again. I heard it again. Didn't you hear anything, Margaret? The voice said, Send food. Send food to John. Well, said Mrs. Brown, you must be ill. I wonder if you have a fever. Lie down and try to sleep. Again, the deacon closed his eyes, and again he heard the voice, Send food to John. This time the deacon was thoroughly awake. Listen, Margaret, do you know anyone named John who might need food? No one that I can think of, said Mrs. Brown, unless, unless it's John Barry, the old charcoal burner up on the mountain. Oh, that's it. That's it, said Mr. Brown. Now, I remember, when I was at the store in town the other day, Mr. Clark said, I wonder if old John Barry is alive. It's six weeks since I saw him. He's not come in for his winter stock of groceries yet. 
It must be that old John's sick and needs food. You see, what had happened was that the Lord, the Spirit of God, remember how when I preached through Romans, we talked about the Spirit testifying to our own spirit that we're his sons and daughters. It's that still, small voice. That's what's going on here. That grocery man had brought up the topic of Mr. Barry and his need for food. And now the Holy Spirit's reminding the deacon, prompting him in his very soul to take care of this, meet this mercy need. Quickly, the deacon and his wife got dressed. Mr. Brown woke Willie and the men ate and hurried breakfast while Mrs. Brown packed a good supply of food in the two largest baskets she could find. After breakfast, Mr. Brown and Willie, their son, hitched up the horses to the double sleigh. With Munt's supply of food, they began their journey. Just as the first streaks of light appeared on the horizon, it was going to be a dangerous trip. The wind was still blowing, and the snow kept falling and drifting. Yet the team of horses continued on their trip of mercy, while the people on the sleigh, wrapped up in blankets and extra buffalo robes, urged the horses through the drifts in the face of the storm. That ten-mile ride, which normally took less than an hour, was not complete until nearly five hours had passed. At last they drew up in front of the hut, where the poor, trusting Christian man and his wife had been praying for help to him who is the hearer of prayer. As the deacon reached the door, he heard the voice of prayer, and he knew that the message which had awakened him from sleep was sent from heaven. He knocked at the door, it was open, and we can scarcely imagine the joy of the old couple. The generous supply of food was carried in, and thanksgivings were raised to God by John Barry and his wife in their mountain hut. The deacon of the church, showing mercy to those in need. And you know, we're all supposed to do that, not just our deacons, but all of us. So listen closely. If the good Lord's ever moving you to help someone else, listen and obey like the deacon did here. He set us a good example. All right. God bless. Hope to see you Sunday. Have a great night.